Welcome into the Commanders Report Mailbag. I am your host, Jack Sperry, and today we got a bunch of great Commanders questions, and I love these types of segments, man, because I get to have that two-way conversation directly from you guys, asking me questions about the Burgundy and Gold, and instead of me guessing what you guys want to hear about on today's video, I get to answer those questions directly, and I get to talk about what you guys want me to talk about, all right? So before we get into it here, Make sure you click that subscribe button because we do these mailbags every single week on the Commanders Report live show on Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. we got a bunch of great Commanders fans that tune in every single week. It's a fantastic community of Commanders fans that gets to, together every single week to talk Commanders football with each other from around the world. So if you want to join that, you want to join the most interactive Commanders fan community right here on the YouTube platform, this is going to be the place for you. Click that subscribe button right now and join us every week on Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then we got one from Merle Garrett. What's up, Merle? It says, would Titans trade Traylon Burks to the Commanders? I, th I, I think that they would, um, but do the Commanders want another receiver is the question. I think that they feel very good about Noah Brown when he gets back. Now, if Noah really starts stinking it up, would they trade maybe a seventh-round pick for Traylon Burks? Maybe. Um, but, you know, Traylon has his own issues too, Merle. He doesn't separate against man coverage all that well. Uh, he's not the best route runner. Um, you know, he, what he does well is he's got strong hands at the catch point so he can make some really tough catches. And if he gets ahead of steam going, like on a crossing route, um, he can really become a, a difficult weapon to bring down because he's big. And if you give him a little bit of a landing zone, like he can really get going with the long speed too. So he is a, he's an interesting character. Not sure about his fit in this offense, if I'm being completely honest with you, Merle. Uh, but I do think he's very gettable. He's pretty far down the, the Titans wide receiver depth chart at this point. Going from RTS with Oscar Monsi. I hope I'm saying that right, Oscar. Uh, says, trade Derek Forrest. For the right price, I'd consider it just because it is Quan Martin and it is uh, Jeremy Chin in there for the most part. Now they are playing Jeremy as kind of like a linebacker hybrid on like obvious passing downs, and they bring Derek in for that. Um, so maybe they really like that three safety package and they don't want to give that up. But if someone offered me a day two pick for Derek Forrest, I'm not going to say no. Um, even a fourth round pick, I'd probably have to consider it, especially if it's at the trade deadline and this team is selling, which definitely seems like a possibility at this point. Then we got one from James Joder. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I said, I've heard the Saints would consider trading Marshawn Lattimore for the right price. Would you trade a day two pick for him? Um, it's I mean, day two, so that'd be a third round pick. Um, definitely interesting. I would consider it just because the, <laughs> the commanders need cornerback help, right? But the thing with, with getting a guy like Lattimore is that he is getting a little bit older. You are going to probably have to give up a day two pick to get him, and you're going to have to give him a new contract. Now, on the other hand, he is a perfect fit for this commander's defense. All right? He could be the number one corner in this scheme right away. He's a true uh, number one press man corner on the outside. He always has been ever since he went out, went out of, of Ohio State. Um, so I like him as a player, um, but there's definitely some risks involved in that. And If the commanders are kind of looking more long-term instead of short-term, I'm not sure if this is something that they'd be interested in. But let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Would you accept this trade? For Marshawn Lattimore. Give up a third round pick in 2025. Remember, the commanders have two of them right now because of the Jahan Dotson trade. So give me an A or a D for accept or decline. This is going to be the pin comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. And when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pin question. All right, then we got one from Jeremy Dobbins here. He says, I heard Adam Peters was hot after game one. What could that mean about Jonathan Allen? Could he be traded during this season? Or the offseason. So honestly, um, I could see Jonathan Allen, you know, just be fed up, right? Because, you know, he has been here for a long time. And pretty much his entire tenure, this team has stunk. Okay, this team has been, at best, like a 500 football team. And he's tired of it. He wants to compete. He wants to use his prime of his career to help a team try to win a championship and a team that has a legitimate chance at a championship. And if this team is continuously, continuously stacking loss after loss like they were last year, and after that week one performance, that's certainly possible, I could see Jonathan Taylor just be like, I'm done, trade me elsewhere, trade me to a, to a title contender. So I could certainly see Jonathan Allen get trade, traded this year, especially with Johnny Newton um, coming in here. He's a rookie, still kind of dealing with an injury, but he's going to be back eventually. 
And, you know, by the trade deadline, he's going to be healthy and ready to go. So could they trade Jonathan Allen? Honestly, if there's one commander's player I could see get traded before the deadline, it's probably Allen at this point. Let me go on from Bring the Boom. <laughs> says, uh, what are the chances you think Cliff Kingsbury is a fraud? Now, you know, I think that there is a, there's, a, there's a chance that he's a fraud. You know, I, I haven't been too impressed with him in his time with the Arizona Cardinals, for example. Um, but I'm willing to give him a shot, all right? I'm not going to fully condemn him or praise him until we get to at least a quarter way through the season because I want to see what kind of wrinkles he puts in with the QB run game. I want to see what he does in the screen game. I want to see if Jaden Daniels can get more comfortable in this drop-back passing game. Um, so I'm not, really to, I'm not ready to just condemn the coach right away after just one game. Um, but, you know, he does have a history of not making adjustments, doing worse in the second half of seasons than in the first half, all these different things, uh, be, being very bland, not utilizing pre-snap motion. So I guess we'll see how things look. Uh, but there's definitely a possibility by year's end I'm calling for the firing of Cliff Kingsbury. So let's say you guys. Let me know down there in the comments section, is Cliff Kingsbury a good offensive play caller? But answer that question for me by giving me a yes or no down there in the comments section. To me, right now, I don't know the answer to that question particularly. If I have to answer it based on his prior experience, I would probably have to say no. Now, before we get into the rest of today's questions on the Washington Commanders, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Game Time, which is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. And folks, we all know that experiencing a sporting event, especially a football game live and in person, whether it's college or pro, is unlike anything you can get from watching the game on your couch. And Game Time has a brand new feature on their app called Game Time Picks, and it's awesome because it filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And really, guys, what I'm looking at here when it comes to the Game Time Picks, it's awesome and it's perfect for me because I'm somebody that doesn't like to waste time buying tickets. I don't like going on my phone and checking a bunch of ticketing apps and all this different stuff. With Game Time, I just go into the app, I find the event I want to go to, I select the Game Time Picks filter, and it automatically does the research for me. They put every ticket they have on that particular event through a special algorithm to show me an awesome uh, list of the best deals that they have on their uh, app platform currently, and I can pick the best seat for me. It's absolutely phenomenal. You guys can get it done right now and start using Game Time Picks right now when you download the Game Time app today. Uh, some other features that I love on the Game Time app is that you get the lowest price guarantee on any ticket to any event. All in pricing so you don't get slapped with crazy fees at checkout, and then flash deals so you can get even cheaper tickets the closer you wait to Game Time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time today. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, it's just for your first purchase. Create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS. One word, all caps, CHATSPORTS, right down there in the bottom right of your screen for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Got one coming in from Eugene. My man says, how do you think the commander's pass rush will fare against the Giants' offensive line, particularly Daniel Jones. So I've been saying here throughout the week, if I put it on our preview this week if you want to check that video out, that I think that the commander should blitz and they should make sure Daniel Jones can't beat them with his legs. That's honestly the best thing about him is that he's, he's a plus runner. Uh, he's not particularly good throwing the ball down the field. He's super, super conservative, likes to take the underneath routes. Uh, so if you're the commanders, you're playing press, you're playing hard flats, you're taking away the underneath routes, and you're forcing Daniel Jones to beat you down the field. When it comes to the pass rush, the offensive line for the Giants stinks outside of Andrew Thomas, their left tackle. So I definitely think this is an offensive line that can be taken advantage of, and especially with all the games and twists and uh, all these and stunts that the commanders like to do on the defensive line. I think Daniel Jones is going to be confused a lot in this football game, and the commanders are going to get home and sack him at least three times. Make sure you guys click that thumbs up icon if you haven't already. If you want to win this week two matchup versus the New York Giants, I know I do. Feels like a must win game, as, as crazy as it sounds for a week two matchup, but if you don't win this one, uh, you might be talking about doing a mock draft on this channel next week, if I'm being honest with you. So make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you want to save the season in week two by getting the dub over the Giants. Then going from JG says, way too early draft question. Is uh, Damani Jackson 
worth a mid-round gamble. Um, so Jackson is an interesting one there, uh, JG. I'm not too sure if it's a if they, if he's if he's going to be a mid round guy. Honestly, he's probably going to be like a day three guy, in my opinion. Haven't watched a ton of film on Damani Jackson, but just based on you know the things that I've seen watching college football on Saturdays, is that you know I'm just not really sure if he's going to be um, you know worth that gamble of a mid round pick. So we'll see. Uh, I'll get you a final answer when I'm actually able to get down to film. Uh, and watching the film on all of these prospects heading into this year's draft. But for right now, my tentative answer is probably not. Then we go on from Clutch, says, how many yards do you think JD5 will have this Sunday? Um, you know, rushing, I'll say like 85 yards. I think he's going to have a couple nice runs. And then passing 220? Is that too much? Maybe 180? Maybe 200? I mean, I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be an interesting game for sure. It's going to be it, – last week, it was a lot of running for JD – um, so I'm hoping he's he's going to try to win more from the pocket. I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with him because uh, I know Dan Quinn said in his press conference that they're really making it a, a focus point for Jaden to not run as much this week. Um, so I'm wondering how that's going to look on Sunday, and I'm wondering how many big plays I can conjure up um, versus the Giants this week. Then we got on from Westside44. says, I thought Mike Samerstrol was pretty bad in week one. Do you think he'll get better as the season goes on? And if so, how quickly? Uh, so Samuel had some really bad coverage busts, gave up some really ugly looking touchdowns. Um, and, you know, he needs to get better. And the coaching staff needs to do a better job at making sure these guys in the secondary know their jobs, especially if they're going to play man match coverage, right? Because if you may have a blown assignment there in man match coverage, it's a wide open receiver. And Baker Mayfield was taking advantage of that all day long. Samer still needs to know the rules. He needs to know what his responsibilities are. But I think once he has that down and he feels comfortable in that, uh, which is, I think is a probably if, if, in a couple weeks, if not this week, as early as this week, I think Samer still is going to be one of the best slot corners in football. He's just so instinctive, good tackler, good blitzer. Uh, you know, get, He has a nose for the football, good ball skills. Really think Samer still is going to be a mainstay in this defense for a long time. And I can't wait to see him blossom into the player I believe he's capable of becoming. So let me know down there in the comments section, what's your confidence level in Mikey Samerstrill? Give me an answer down there in the comments section uh, with a number between 1, meaning not confident at all, to 10, meaning supreme confidence in Mike Samerstrill. That'll be it for this week's Mailbag, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you uh, that's watching live here uh, that submitted questions. If you guys didn't submit questions this week or if you're watching this, uh, in video form later in the week. I appreciate you guys watching the video today. Click that subscribe button so you can join us every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern time to get your questions on the next edition of the Commander Support Mailbag.